Connections, Building and Cultivating a Staff Mentorship Program. My name is Beth Rugg, and I'm the Professional Development Coordinator for SIGX, and I'll be helping to facilitate this event. Terry Fernandez is a Senior Director of Customer Services and Support. Jackie Palumbo is the Director of Training and Performance Training and Performance Improvement, and Matteo Becky is the Project manage, Manager, represent, and they all represent the Advisory Committee for the Mentorship Program for the Office of Information Technology at American University. I'm actually personally very excited to hear their presentation because they took an idea and have uh, developed a very uh, excellent and well-revered program for their institution, and I think many of other many of us can gain from their experiences. But before we jump in, I just want to go over a few uh, rules of the road. By default, everyone is muted. That's so that we can keep out any distracting background noise. But you can send us in questions, and that's where my job as facilitator will come into play. Uh, so can I uh, just can everyone go ahead and chat in a question? Just say hi or something so that I know you know how to use that feature. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we are going to be recording the session, and it will be available within a few short weeks. With that, I'll just go ahead and turn it over to Terry. All right, Beth, thank you very much. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. It is definitely our pleasure to be sharing information about how we've developed and sustained our mentorship program over the past three years to benefit the staff within the Office of Information Technology here at American University. We hope that by sharing our experiences and resources, you'll be able to create a program of your own at your institution or generate new ideas on how to mature your existing one. So I'd like to begin by sharing a little information about the presenters today. While you're welcome to look us up online to get details on our organizational responsibilities, we thought it was more critical to share our mentorship credentials. All three of us have worn multiple hats and are extremely passionate about mentorship. This stems from the fact that we have all benefited from mentors of our own throughout our careers who have shaped who we are today. So as Beth already said, my name is Terry Fernandez, and I'm the Senior Director of Customer Service and Support. I was one of the founding members of our mentorship committee. I have mentored two colleagues per year for our office for the past three years, primarily with a focus on communication, leadership, and relationship management skills. In 2013, I also served as a mentor to a colleague at another university through SIGOX's program when it was first launched. And just this year, I've joined the Mentorship Advisory Board for SIGUX. Over the past year, it's also been fun to explore some other models by serving as a mentor through the Girls in Technology program for high school girls interested in STEM fields and also at the Educause Connect conference. So now I'd like to introduce my colleagues. Uh, Matteo Becchi is a project manager within our Enterprise Systems Department. He has served as a mentor to one to two colleagues per year, um, primarily interested in honing their project management skills. He's also worked with a different mentor from our senior leadership team each year over the past three years for his own professional development. And Matteo joined us on the mentorship committee in 2014. And then last but not least, is our guiding force behind the program, handling a lot of the logistics and programming. That's Jackie Palumbo, who serves as our Director of Training and Performance Improvement within the IT Customer Service Department. Uh, she was also a founding member of our mentorship committee and has served as both a mentor and a mentee for each of the last three years. She was also a mentee in 2013 through the SIGUX program. And she's currently being mentored by one of her faculty members from the Educause Management Institute. So there's a lot of mentorship going on here. To share a little bit of information about American University, just to put it in context for you, we are a private liberal arts institution located in the northwest corner of Washington, D.C., in an affluent suburban neighborhood about less than a mile from the Maryland state line. 
We are one of only four universities in the country to have been chartered and provided our mission by an act of Congress, so just an interesting fact. Um, you can see our enrollment numbers on the screen with about 7,000 undergraduates and a little less than 6,000 in our graduate programs or our law school. In the Office of Information Technology, there are currently 110 full-time equivalent staff working within the four university departments that make us. So looking back at 2012, there were a number of key influences that signaled that it was the right time for us to begin offering a mentorship program for our internal staff. First was something that, this was something that our senior management team had always wanted to do but no one had stepped forward to lead the initiative. Uh, while we always tried to share knowledge and promote from within, we recognized that we were starting to lose some of our top performers. We wanted to identify a way to make sure that our staff knew that if they worked hard, we were committed to investing in their professional development to achieve their goals and hopefully our shared goals. Offering a mentorship program is also a recognized best practice for high-performing mature organizations and that was how we wanted to be seen. We had completed the survey back then for Computer World's Best Places to Work IT competition, but we weren't selected in 2012. So kind of coincidentally, at about the same time, our Human Resources Department conducted a campus-wide climate and culture survey of all staff. And the OIT results definitely indicated a desire for more professional development opportunities. And then last but not least, in talking about our inspirations, we were inspired by SIGUX. As soon as we saw their announcement of their program, three of us immediately signed up to participate. It was a tremendous benefit that we were able to borrow many of the survey questions that were used for matching participants, we also took advantage of some of the reference materials, and quite honestly, I don't think that we would have started the program when we did without this model. Once we had our program in place, we were not only named to Computer World's top 100, but we were featured in their publication, and we directly attribute that to our mentorship program. Thank you, Terry. I'm so pleased to be able to share our experiences in creating our mentorship program with you. So there's so many benefits to creating a mentorship program for the institution, the mentors, and the mentees. And what we have on the screen is a high-level compilation of the benefits for establishing such a program. Our idea was to give this to you as talking points. So if you want to create a program for your institution, you can provide this to senior leadership as reasons this would be a good idea. But I also wanted to share with you the benefits that we personally have experienced here at American University and in OIT. We found the benefits for our individuals, both for the mentors and mentees, are vast. We have staff members serving in dual roles, and we have senior staff members who are mentoring multiple individuals. Through the program, we've been able to see staff members achieve their long-held career goals, learn new ways to approach a challenge, and share knowledge and expertise freely. As one of our mentees said, this program exponentially helped me to learn the skills I wanted to learn. After participating in the program, I felt that if I can learn this, I can learn more. Confidence is the result of this program. In addition to benefiting both the mentors and mentees on a one-to-one -one basis, our program participants cited the value of the experience in seeing coworkers in a different context through the mentorship cohort. I've personally been astounded at how colleagues have opened up and been honest in sharing their strengths and areas for improvement, and they've become resources for each other. We've become a team, and we're strengthening our culture of trust. So I'd also like to talk to you about how we founded the program and established a governance and program structure. As Terry mentioned, she and I were both founding members of the OIT mentorship program. We knew this is something we wanted to go forward with, and we had to start by founding a mentorship committee. So we reached out, we found three volunteers from different areas of OIT, 
and that was the cornerstone of starting the program. Then we relied on our trusted internal and external resources. We reached out to campus staff because there was one existing mentoring program on campus. It was for the facilities management group, and they helped us tremendously. They shared with us feedback and resources from their program. Now, their program was structured a bit differently than ours. It was a shorter program, three to four months in duration, and they had fewer people involved. It was almost like an apprenticeship program, but their help was invaluable. We worked with our workplace learning and development group to hold focus groups where we invited all of OIT to help plan and vision what we wanted from a program. And then last but certainly not least, we utilized materials provided by SIGUX, EDUCAUSE, and other trusted organizations. So once we knew how we wanted the program to be structured, we needed to market the program. Luckily, we had the full support of our CIO and senior directors. We launched the program and sent out our mentorship survey and conducted the mentorship mentee matching process. Mateo will talk about that process in more detail later. Once we'd done the match, we developed and initiated communications to all matched individuals. And once the program launched, we maintained communications until a level of comfort was ensured. And this could and sometimes was ongoing. To market our program, we took every opportunity to represent as a group on campus. We went to all campus events, such as the OIT Tech Expo, Staff Council Breakfast. Uh, we have some planned service events coming up. And one thing that's really exciting is we decided to brand our program, and we had a mentorship logo contest this year. And you can see the results at the image in the upper left-hand corner of our slide. I think that says so much about what the program is. We have someone helping another, actually putting them on their shoulders, putting together a piece of the puzzle. And we're getting t-shirts, so that'll be nice. So for scheduling, we've chosen to have 11 planned events per year. Um, we skip only August, because that's our busy time. And our planned events really are opportunities for our participants to grow their own skills or even for other departments on campus to grow their skills. We'll talk about some of our events, but in some cases we've reached out to groups like Workplace Learning and Development, and they've created programs for us that we've piloted for them that then they've rolled out to the rest of campus. So we'll talk a little bit about the program administration. I talked about how we started the program. Now at this point, administering it is not particularly time consuming. So know that once you're in year two or year three, it probably takes each of us about 10 hours a year to administer the program. So a very reasonable time commitment. For us, we chose to have our program last for the duration of one year, but we've seen it work well in shorter increments, such as with our facilities management department. We've also asked our mentors and mentees to agree to have one hour per month set aside to meet, and that seems to work well for our group. And then finally, confidentiality is critical to the program. This is ensured by our mentorship agreement, which we'll show you later. And I'm happy to say that in three years of working with the program, we've never had a breach or even the suggestion of a breach of confidentiality. Um, everything has worked quite well. Okay, so moving a little more into the mechanics of how we manage this program year after year. We start, we run this program over a calendar year from January through to December. So in January, uh, right after the new year, we um, jump right into um, summoning membership activity um, through the actual survey that you're seeing here. There is a list of questions for mentors on the left and a list of questions for mentees or protégés on the right. Um, so depending on which role um, a staff member wants to fulfill, he or she will go in and fill out the survey accordingly. Um, we send several reminders just to make sure we're uh, getting in front of uh, all of our staff members and getting their attention and making sure that this is not another email that just passes by uh, the inbox. 
So f this survey represents the data that then as a committee we use to make the matches as Jackie mentioned. Um, so we get together as a, as a mem uh, mentoring committee uh, into a room and we basically line the wall with post-its and, and match up uh, sort of a supply and demand kind of a thing. Um, so from a mentor side, what are their strengths, what are their skills, why do they want to be a mentor? Um, as a mentor, do they have areas uh, that they want to improve upon? What's their career background? Uh, do they have prior mentoring experience? And um, how do they think being a mentor might help them in their, in their own career? Uh, and on the mentee side, we look at similar questions but different. Um, why is someone looking to be mentored? Uh, what are they looking to learn um, in terms of knowing themselves? What, what do they think their strengths and their weaknesses are? Um, do they know their learning style? What, how best do they learn um, new information? And then we also ask them a career-based question to understand where they see themselves now uh, versus the future in terms of their career. So it only takes us about uh, an hour now to, to match up um, something like you know high 20s pairs of mentors and mentees for the entire year which is not bad at all. Um, we also take opportunities during our all hands meetings in the prior year to um, spend five or ten minutes uh, to present upon the mentoring program and share success stories um, and that seems to really get staff's attention. Uh, what else? So once we've planned out our matching pairs, uh, as a committee we reach out, we divvy up who to reach out to, and we reach out to the mentees first to make sure, to check with them, to see if um, they agree that the pair that we've uh, set them up with is going to meet their needs, um, or if they want to make a change, they have the option to do that as well. Uh, once they've validated that this is a good match, uh, we move over to the mentors and do the same check. Um, and then we leave it up to the mentees to make the first move and schedule the first discussion with their mentors. So that's a little bit about the actual pairing. Moving over to the resources we provide um, to our program members. Um, so we've borrowed heavily from SIGUX and their program, so we really appreciate uh, everything they've done uh, because, again, we're standing on shoulders of giants and we're able to uh, provide great value to our own staff. Um, so you'll see on your screen three sample documents. On the left-hand side, uh, there's a mentorship agreement form. This is uh, suggested and recommended, but not required. Something to be used by the mentee and the mentor in the beginning uh, of their relationship, so January, February timeframe. This is something they can use to fill out uh, and define on paper um, the goals um, that the mentee is seeking to achieve. Um, also, define any kind of mechanics, logistics, how do they want to work together, um, what's the frequency of the meetings that they're going to take on together, and also what, what's the preferred method of communication, how will they interact in between meetings, email, phone, in person, etc. Um, if they want to sign it, great, it's up to them. Um, signatures can give a sense of uh, a greater confidentiality, um, and it's for, that inspires trust as well. So this is a nice um, vehicle for that. Um, we have a sheet on strategies for building the relationship. So this is our cycle um, in the top right corner of that document. You'll see that this is a great guide for the pair uh, for the, the year-long relationship that they're taking on together to help them uh, along this learning journey that they're going through together. On the right, um, a similar document, uh, it's a development checklist that could be used to trigger some thoughts and provoke some discussion around um, what kinds of skills uh, a mentee is looking to acquire, um, some, something about the university that he or she might want to learn more about, um, et cetera. So those are just some of the resources. We leverage SharePoint as our home for just about all of this. Uh, the survey resides in SharePoint, the resources are in SharePoint, mentors and mentees have um, their own sites and all of this information is accessible through there. So enough about resources for now, um, let's move over to programming and activities. So on this slide you'll see four major sections going left to right. First off, uh, program activities. 
um, throughout the whole year, Jackie mentioned there's 11 actual uh, programmed uh, events throughout the year. Um, so we offer a mentorship roundtable, a mid-year check-in, and then an end-of-year luncheon. So those are sort of your governance kind of uh, sessions. Um, and the end-of-year luncheon is in December, of course, and it is hosted by our CIO. CIO hosts us to lunch at a, at a nice restaurant in the area, and it's a nice you know, hour and a half time outside of the office where uh, we get to just recognize um, what this program has done for each and every one of us that have participated in it. Um, what's also nice is at the end of that luncheon, we're presented with our certificates as well. So we get to display those at our desks, proudly. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a variety of tools and workshops and self-assessment vehicles that we like to use each year. Um, so this includes things like MBTI, Enneagram, Strengths Finder, Jahari Window, any kind of assessment that will help an individual learn more about himself or herself, which in turn will help he or she interact more effectively with others. Um, so this is a, a great series of opportunities throughout the year for each of us to acquire more knowledge about ourselves um, and to in that way be more effective as uh, professionals in our organization. Um, topics of interest and mentorship participants. So this is a pretty rich program. Uh, year after year, it gets better and better, and there's just so much good content. Uh, we have a variety of presentations that we host um, as part of the programming year. Um, some of our senior leaders, including Terry and our CISO and our CIO, present to the program membership about topics such as being strategic or um, how to achieve a life balance, um, presenting with confidence, maybe building a resume through a workshop. Um, and also our CIO who's presented at Educause and a few other areas on the top 10 considerations for being a CIO in higher ed. So these are nice programming opportunities for everyone to uh, absorb. And last but not least, we also try and include some fun and team building activities in our calendar year. Um, we include social typically, um, so this might be off-site uh, where uh, mentorship program members will come out and, and spend some time together that's not in the actual office. We're putting together a service project where um, members of the program can come together and pitch in on a local cause. And as, met, as Jackie mentioned earlier, we completed the logo design contest. Um, which is featured in the top left corner of our slides. So we have so many success stories that we'd like to share, but we only have a limited time today. We're so proud of our program. As Terry mentioned, we've had 54 pairings to date, including a unique reverse mentoring where our CISO is being mentored on graphic visualization by our project manager. Um, We've had, since the start of the program, multiple requests from other campus departments to be part of our mentorship program. And it wasn't until this year that we felt that the program was mature enough to take that on, but we're happy to have welcomed our first non-OIT mentee in 2015. He's focusing on information security, and we certainly hope we'll have more people as the program goes forward. So now I want to tell you a story, and you can see the quote on the screen, but I want to tell you a story about three um, individuals who have really benefited from the mentorship program. So the story starts with Siari Habti. He's the gentleman in the middle, and that's his quote. And he worked for AU for a number of years on the help desk and then on our technology support desk. And when we started our mentorship program, he was interested in learning more about network engineering. We were able to pair him with Andrew, who's the gentleman at the top of the screen, and for a year they worked closely together. Siari, on his own, decided to complete certifications, and as time passed, a position opened up in network engineering, and he was able to apply and be accepted in that position. He wanted to pay this back by serving as a mentor. So we had Mike, the gentleman at the bottom of the screen. He's currently a TSD staff member. And he requested Ciari as his mentor. He was inspired by Ciari. As Mike puts it, 
I saw Ciari pushing himself and leading by example. So to date, Mike has independently pursued and achieved four certifications, and he's well on his way. And I expect if we check back next year, hopefully we'll have a few more people on that line there. So after three years of experience, we wanted to share a few words of wisdom that we've discovered along our journey. First, we encourage our staff to serve in dual roles, as there's something to gain from each type of role as both a mentor or a mentee. Like Ciari's story that we just heard, we've had a number of examples of individuals where they were first mentees and then they gained the confidence to be able to serve as a mentor to someone else on the team. So that's something that we definitely want to see continue. Next, stress that the burden is on the mentee. Matteo mentioned this earlier. So they need to schedule that first meeting and it's their responsibility to schedule follow-up meetings and to do their homework. The reason for this is that they will only get as much out of the relationship as they're willing to put into it. So we know that sometimes this can be intimidating for new mentees that have been paired with more senior staff, but we work hard to make them comfortable with that. We encourage each pair to have a discussion about the mentee's preferred level of check-in and accountability. It's good to find out of, do you want us to poke you every two weeks to make sure that you're delivering on time, or do you just want to sit back until the next time you reach out to the mentor and schedule something. The next thing is to recognize that not every pairing works. There will inevitably be personality conflicts, but these have been a rare occurrence for us, fortunately. We try to counsel apprehensive individuals to give the relationship a chance. When Matteo talked about our pairing process, we do approach the mentees first and say, this is the mentor that has been picked for you. We want to make sure that this is going to work. They have a chance to ask for a different mentor, but in most cases, we've been able to share with them why this individual was the right fit for them and ask them to give it a chance. Uh, we also try to follow up frequently and offer support wherever we can to make sure those pairings work. And along those lines, it's good to know that not every mentor can attend to every mentee's needs uh, or their stated goals, so that's okay. Um, sometimes some of our pairings, the mentor might only feel like he or she can uh, help with one or two top goals of that mentee, and that's okay. We ask them to start there um, and see how it progresses over time. Also, we remind our mentors and mentees to leverage other resources that have expertise in areas that the mentor uh, who's assigned to them might not. Um, our community of mentor, mentors and mentees, they've expressed uh, a desire to to have more community feel with this program. That came out after the first year, um, I believe, and uh, our programming reflects um, the changes that we've made in order to try and achieve that. So we try and create many opportunities um, aside from the presentations, aside from the actual um, self-learning sessions and assessments for us to just come together and talk and hang out, and, and that helps with that community feel. Um, I think it's a another way of keeping the conversation going, um, because otherwise we can get distracted by our jobs and, 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 it's, and sort of um, that can hamper the conversation. Um, another thing we've noticed uh, is that having um, levels of our organization such as our CIO and our senior leaders presenting throughout the program and showing their support, um, that adds um, a really special feeling to this program and to the people that are participants in it. Um, it really helps with this and this warm and fuzzy, you know, a nice uh, sort of cultural fabric that we can weave together. Um, so a lot of our staff might not have any time uh, in front of the CIO unless it's maybe an all hands meeting that they're attending. So this is a great opportunity to increase that face time. So when you start your program, it is just fine to plan to start small and grow. 
When we started the program, we expected maybe a handful of participants. We were surprised when we had 14 match pairs in the first year. But we certainly could have done it with a smaller group. Success and word of mouth will grow your program, even if you don't have a lot of people at the beginning. The other thing about starting small is think about doing a shorter time frame. You can do a pilot. You could do a three-month pilot, a six-month pilot, or you could find that that model um, becomes your permanent program. Three to six months is a great start. So the other um, thing we want to stress is celebrate at every opportunity. I think both Terry and Matteo have done a great job of telling you about all the opportunities we've had to talk about the program and celebrate it, from the mentorship luncheon um, to attending campus events uh, to being featured in Computer World. When we hear good news that's about the program or that relates to the program of one of the participants, we make sure to share it. We make sure to have those conversations on campus. So finally, we've put together a helpful but by no means all-inclusive resource list for you. Um, we've broken it down into books and web links. I'm not going to read them all, but I will say one thing that's been um, wonderful for us is we've created an on-site mentorship library so participants can come and check out books, and we've tried to stock it with books that related to the different um, programs that we're offering. So a couple of things we can recommend, the Do What You Are book, um, for the Myers-Briggs instrument. All of our strengths finder resources have been really well received. And for web links, we've placed on here all of our mentorship program documents. We certainly encourage you to use them and to share them with your colleagues. That would make us very happy if we see that, um, you know, give back and have it out there and shared. Um, we have a link to the Enneagram test. That was one of our programs this year. That is a free test. And another helpful link is Enneagram in Business. And we also wanted to let you know that Terry Fernandez developed an Enneagram workshop, um, which she presented to the mentorship group. And um, she would be happy to share that material with you if you're interested. In addition, um, we have the StrengthsFinder website and, of course, the SIGUX Mentoring Wiki. SIGUX was our inspiration and guide when we started, and it remains one of our best resources. So the documents that uh, Jackie and Matteo referenced, we do have those links as well directly there uh, as PDFs. So if people are interested in obtaining those copies later, they can have them also. So that should be helpful for folks. So now we'd like to invite any questions um, since that concludes our formal presentation. So Beth, if you want to share anything as it's coming in, and I'm going to advance to the slide with our contact info so that folks will be able to see that as well and follow up with us. Great, thank you. Terry, I know I have a question. I think um, our organization, we're a central IT organization at a university, uh, and yet my staff still has concerns about their ability to progress in their careers because we are somewhat flat still. Do you find that by being able to participate in a mentoring program that it both somewhat fills that uh, psychological need as well as then provides additional professional opportunities as well? Absolutely. So I know sometimes, um, you know, it can be a fear when we first talk to our human resources department about this program, for example, one of the things that, that they were nervous about is staff members here can do formal professional development plans, learning plans, if you will, as part of our performance process. They were concerned about, you know, once staff start to clearly articulate their goals, um, does that imply that we have, you know, an obligation? And so if you do have a flatter organization where there may not be as many opportunities for advancement, will that be a challenge for them? And essentially what we found is, is the exact opposite, as you mentioned, that people are able to fulfill those personal goals. They are able to broaden themselves in other ways too, even beyond. We definitely have had cases where people have been promoted as a result of working with their mentors as, as with the CRA example. Um, but others have gotten introduced to people across campus or colleagues at other institutions that have been able to help them and provide them with guidance. 
Um, and you know, some of it is just preparing yourself for that moment when the right position does open up too. Great, thank you. We do have a couple questions. Uh, Lucas is wondering, how much of those documents slash program can you share or are you willing to share? I think you were willing to share it all, correct? Jackie, you want to take that one? Um, we are definitely willing to share uh, everything we have. So if you go to that link, um, you'll be able to see the mentorship contract, the mentorship checklist, uh, mentorship tips. And again, um, we have to give our regards to SIGUX because that, that was the genesis of us creating those documents. So we definitely want to um, give that back. Um, any presentation that we created in-house and offered, um, such as the Enneagram program, we would be happy to share with you as well. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Ron is wondering, uh, when you talk of creating a community feel, are program alumni invited to some of the community building events or just current members and men uh, current mentors and mentees? Can I take that? Sure. Um, I think that's a really good um, question. Um, I would say certainly alum are invited. Um, so in fact, we have, and one of the things that we'd like to share as you move forward with your own program, we have people who tend to participate year after year. So many of the alums kind of re-enroll, but I will say that those who have um, are no longer in the program this year, but are still active in OIT are, are welcome to come to anything. Although um, your question spurred us to think about maybe we need to make a more conscientious effort to reach out and invite them. I know with the mentorship logo contest, it was actually one of our alumni paired with a current program member who developed the winning entry. So it, it, they're still definitely included in our communications. Great, thank you. Uh, Norm is wondering, does your university have technical support personnel in academic areas, non-central OIT? And if so, do you encourage them to participate in the mentorship program? So yes, actually, uh, I should have mentioned that, you know, we are highly decentralized in that sense when it comes to academic support. There's as many of them out there as there are of us. So there's a, uh, about 100 or so of them um, that are either in the schools individually or within our library or Center for Teaching Research and Learning uh, as a separate organization. Um, we actually, the first person that joined us is part of what we call our AU technical team or our technical support partners from around the campus. So we are now trying to branch out to include those other folks. Um, it's just helping to strengthen that relationship that we already have with them. Great, thank you. Um, and again, Ron was noticing that the links on the last slide didn't seem to be clickable. So is it possible for you to, if you send me the PowerPoint slides and I can make sure that I can get those out to everybody who attended this event. Would absolutely. that be possible? Yes, absolutely. Alrighty, perfect. Um, and Terry, this is going way back to the beginning, but I wasn't sure how long from, did it take you from the idea to actually getting the program up and running? Good question. So it was pretty quick for us. I think um, the communications went out with SIGOX and like I said, that was such a, a spark for us um, in inspiring us to move forward. Um, it was really just the last few months of the year. Um, okay. You know, it was October time frame that I think the survey went out um, from SIGOX. Um, once we had that in hand, then we spent the time from October and November. We announced the program at our December All Hands, and we officially launched in January. So it was a pretty short time. Now the programming was not all planned out through the course of the year like it is now, mm -hmm. um, but we kind of you know, took one month at a time um, and developed the program based on the needs of the participants for that year. Perfect. And it sounds like you might also recommend making sure that you check with your, you know, as others can think about doing this, that you check not only within your IT organization, but also with HR. And are there any other um, departments in the university that you, you would suggest one reaches out to when trying to establish a program like this? 
Well, for us, Human Resources has definitely been uh, a great partner for us. Like Jackie mentioned before, they were able to create some of these courses. Um, they didn't have a Strengths Finder course previously, but they did based on our recommendation, and so move forward with that, and now they offer it to the whole campus. Uh, the Career Center, the resume workshop that we did was actually, we had a guest speaker from the Career Center come in. Um, I know our senior team was very nervous about doing resume workshops for folks. Does that mean that they're going to, you know, want to go out and look at jobs elsewhere? But it was really the opposite. It was looking at it from a standpoint of if you have a goal of the position that you want, then let's look at what the requirements are, um, how that position is described, and so on, because those are the key things. And so you're able to examine it in terms of where are my gaps. And so you can develop a plan for moving forward based on that. So those have been two real key partners for us. But we also try to look at where are there other campus experts. Um, this year we had a, a number of folks that said that they wanted to work on presenting with confidence and how do I do that. So of course we have faculty experts and others across the campus. So whenever we have a special need we try to figure out who's the best one to reach out to for that. And if there's no one, we fill in the gaps. Great, thank you. And I'm just going to ask one last question. Um, it sounds like your senior leader was very supportive of the program. Is that true? Or did you have to convince him or her? No, absolutely. And, and, it, and if one had to convince their senior leader, what would the kind of elevator speech be? Right. Um, we did not have to convince our CIO. He definitely knew that this was a, a best practice of mature organizations and it is a way of showing that you were willing to invest in the staff for all of their hard work that they are giving to you on a day-to-day -day basis. You're, you're willing and able to be able to give them, devote time and energy and so on to, to meeting their goals because it will make the organization better in the end too. Um, in terms of the rest of the elevator speech, speech we have been um, reaching out to the university administration now, though, because after the success of this program over the last three years in our office, as we mentioned, many other departments are interested in offering a similar program or for us doing some cross-pollination between the different departments. Um, so I have actually been going on the road and reaching out to our senior administration to try to create something that is more across the university itself um, to kind of break down those silos and those barriers that we encounter. And our president has offered his endorsement. So again, we want to start small and move into other areas departments that are willing to, again, kind of put forth the same type of advisory committee and so on structure. But we want to share our resources and our expertise to be able to, to continue moving forward. Thank you. Um, well, I don't, no other questions have come in, so I want to thank you all for your time and I guess an inspiring example. Um, for those of you who are listening, we have recorded this, and it should be available on the SIGUX website within, within a few days. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about the SIGUX mentorship program, I can help you answer those questions. I can be a resource for you. And I believe I noticed today that registration for the, our, our fall conference uh, has opened up, I believe, just today. So if any of you are interested in learning more about SIGUX, then uh, please uh, look at our conference website and come meet us if you don't know us already. With that, we will be taking a bit of a break for the SIGOX webinars for Ju uh, July and August. I can't believe it's June already, but we will look to pick up a few more in the fall, September and October. So thank you all for your time, and feel free to email me if you have any questions. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.